Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I don't have a tutorial, but I would like to show you the Bay Crochet project that I recently completed. This is a Tree of Life Afghan that I was commissioned to make. The pattern is from Lion Brand Yarns website. For those of you who are interested in this pattern, I will leave the link in the description box below. I love nature, I love trees, so this afghan pattern is my absolute favorite. This is the third blanket that I've made from this pattern, and I know for sure I will be making more. The very first one was this one, and I follow the pattern exactly as it is. I still have this blanket and I love having it on the chair in my room during the winter months. The blanket is warm and cozy and it adds a bright splash of color during the rainy and gloomy winter days. The second blanket that I've made from this pattern was this one. I made it as a birthday gift to a family friend. I followed the pattern closely, but I replaced the middle flower panel with another tree panel. And now let me tell you all about this third blanket that I've made. An elderly gentleman from my neighborhood commissioned it to me. He told me for many years he has had an afghan made by his grandmother. But unfortunately over the years it's got misplaced or lost and he no longer has it. So he would like to have another one. I was really touched to hear this story and I was happy to take on this commission. I think many of you will agree that for us crocheters, making things for others is one of the greatest joys and rewards of our craft. The yarn used for this blanket is Karen Simply Soft. Those of you who have been following my channel for a while know that this is one of my all-time favorite yarns. It is a budget-friendly, good quality acrylic yarn, which comes in a variety of beautiful colors. The blanket took 13 skeins of yarn. I worked with a hook size H, 5 mm, but for the border I used a smaller size hook, which was E, 3.5 mm. The finished measurements of the blankets are 68 inches long and 53 inches wide. This is quite a large and heavy blanket, and in this version I modified the original pattern quite a lot. Instead of three panels or rows of trees, I made four. I didn't do the dividers in between the panels. After I completed four panels of trees, I realized that the blanket is quite long, but not wide enough. Obviously, I could not redo that amount of work, so I came up with a solution of adding two vertical panels of single crochets on the sides of the blanket. At first, I started working the vertical panel by making a single crochet into each end of rows. But after making several rows, I realized that the vertical panel didn't lay flat. It was wavy. I had to reduce the amount of stitches. I also decided to switch to a smaller size hook. Here is how I made those decreases. The first row, I still worked a single crochet into each end of rows, but in the second row, I worked the decreases. I made 10 single crochets, then two single crochets together decrease, and again, 10 single crochets and a decrease for the entire row. And that worked out wonderfully. I then worked the second vertical panel in the same way. After those panels were done, I made a border around the entire blanket. I used reverse single crochets worked into front loop only as suggested in the original pattern. That is the same border that I used on the two blankets that I previously made. The entire blanket looks like a painting of a forest, and the border of reverse single crochets looks like a frame, a piece of art. That's what the gentleman who commissioned this blanket called it when he saw it finished. Another thing I want to mention about this blanket is the loose ends. You know how annoying it can be when you finish a crochet item and you start using it and with time ends of yarns begin to come undone and stick out. To make sure this won't happen with this afghan, not only did I weave in each end tail, but I also stitched it in using a sewing needle and a matching sewing thread. I must admit, that was a very tedious work, and it was my least favorite part about making this blanket. But again, many of you will agree that when we make a crochet item, whether a big one or a small one, 
whether for ourselves or for sale or commission, to do justice to our craft, we must always strive to do our best. After I weaved in and secured all the loose ends, I examined the blanket very carefully on both sides, making sure there was not a single tail left and not a single loose stitch. This is the wrong side of the blanket and you can see how neat it is. It took me about two months to complete this blanket. I will honestly say I am proud of the work and effort I had put into it. I think whatever we do in our lives, we must always do it to our best ability. And when the commissioner got his blanket, he was very pleased with my work. In fact, he paid me $50 more than the original price we agreed upon. He also said this blanket will be a family heirloom and when he is gone, the blanket will be passed on to his son. That's the project and the story I wanted to share with you today. Perhaps it will inspire some of you or maybe just make you smile. In any case, thank you so much for watching. Happy crocheting everyone and until the next video.